Hello and welcome to another episode of Two Lamps Garage. We are back working on the 1980 Dodge pickup. And I'm trying to get it ready for the Mopar Madness show that we're going to have um, November 4th. And well, I got a lot to get done with this truck to have it ready. It's the only Mopar I got. So it's the only vintage Mopar I got, I should say. Got some goals to get this truck done. So this is going to be a multi part series trying to get this truck ready. Now I'll go say some of this footage that's in this video, especially the early part, was shot probably back in March, maybe even February. It, it's it's been a minute. That's and some of it's just go in today. So anyway, enjoy the video, and we're gonna get this truck ready for a show. <laughs> It's been a minute since I've done anything on this truck on camera. I had an issue where the throw out bearing came off the fork and turned out to be a whole lot easier fix than I was anticipating. But anyway, back to getting this thing on the road. Need to change the wheel cylinders in the back. Now I ordered two wheel cylinders and unfortunately one got lost. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the one I got and Look at these lines, the hard lines, the soft lines, and all. See what we need to do, put this back on the road. And I'm probably going to end up just having to order another wheel cylinder. Also, if you don't have one of these electric ratchets, you're really missing out. This was money well spent. Um, get whatever brand you like. Um, I chose Work Pro because I've had good local for tools. It was cheap, and it came with batteries, two batteries and charger, and some bits. I thought this was the best value and I've absolutely loved it. Put these in one place so I'm sure to lose them. These are absolutely shot. And I'll also add that if the line is stuck on there good, it's just not going to come off. Just cut it off. Probably need to won't hurt to replace the line anyway. Also, it probably would have helped me a little bit if I would taken the line off in the bolts, but I'm not going to cry over that. I'll just go ahead and cut it off, put a new line on it. Not a big deal. Yeah, that was a bit of a lost cause. Now, let's hope I got the right wheel cylinders. <laughs> when you know it, <laughs> wrong wheel cylinder. So that'll shut me down for the night. Not a big deal. Because I did find out ironic that these were the same ones the Ford used. So anyway, 71 F100 will end up using these wheel cylinders once I find the other one. So guess I'll look at changing the brake lines. Alright, so I took the wheel cylinders off. And here's one of the factory pushers if you look right here real close I sure hope it shows up on camera but there is a pentastar on there that means these are the factory original wheel cylinders 43 years old so yeah I think it's time to replace them all right so in here the wheel cylinders removed and I got a line made up um, I made this up last night um, my cousin-in-law came by and he's He's got the passion for these old vehicles, so I was showing him how to do various brake things. He's only 21 years old, so it's good to be able to try to help the next generation get involved with these trucks, because this is a hobby that's, um, that I'm seeing less and less interest from young people in, so got my line already made up here. Yeah, just I just snapped this hard line with my bare hands, so I'm definitely doing the right thing changing them. These lines in here, I'll just tell you, if you don't have your line in there completely straight, there is no tolerance in these four vats, so it can be quite aggravating. Just be patient with it. And for my wheel cylinders, I'm using these Dorman ones. Now I got these because they were the cheapest I could find. I got the bolts, but while I still got everything loose, I'm going to go ahead and tie this hard line in because if I can move the wheel cylinder a little, it might go a little easier. And let me tell you, that really helped a lot, especially on this one. And tighten her up. Alright, so that's in. Go ahead and put the shoes back where they need to be. Alright, now normally I would change all the hardware and the brakes. 
But when I took the drums off, I saw everything in here was brand new. So I decided not to do that. However, this adjuster down here is a little stiff. So I'm going to put some blaster on it. Also adjusted them out a little bit because, well, they needed it. But yeah, that should, that should help a lot in this situation. I'm going to take my 10 millimeter line wrench and tighten this nut on the line so everything's good and secure. And now put the springs back. <laughs> All right, so for now, I just really need to get to my trailer and this truck's in the way. So yeah, I still need to bleed the brakes and a couple miscellaneous things. But for now, I'm just gonna put a couple lug nuts on here so I can move this truck either under its own power or by chain. I just need to move it down the driveway. Good enough. All right, so on the Dodge, I'm getting ready to run a new brake line for the rears. I'll show you a little something here. Um, this brake line, I'm gonna have to fish between the gas tank and the frame rail, so I put some tape over the end of it so while I'm fishing it, dirt won't go in there, I'll have that to worry about. And this piece of tape has two purposes. One, I got a place I think I might have a rub issue, so this is to protect the line. And second, when I put my flare nut on here, I'll keep it from just sliding down the line. Man, it's good to be back working on my Dodge again. I guess my first order of business today is the brake booster, finish that up. The D250 booster fits marvelously. However, it does use the rather large vacuum port that's sitting on the front where the old one had the valve sitting to the side. So I stopped by a local auto parts store, picked up three feet of, well, it's actually a transmission line, but it ain't gonna collapse, so it'll pull a vacuum. So I can lengthen it if I got enough left over, it's the right size, I may change the PCV valve. If it doesn't work out, I'm not gonna lose any sleep. All right, do what we do here. All right, I need to put some kind of lubricant on the end here. Let's try it now. I just don't want to put too much pressure on this thing and break it. There we go. And lubricant, WD-40. See, I don't want to kink it. So I think I'm going to go around the carburetor to right there. That should work. Nope. Or maybe I should do that. That might be a better option. And yeah, assuming that PCV valve is the same size, I should be able to change that hose just the same. Alright, got the brakes gravity bleeding, but um, a few weeks ago I found this doorknob at an antique store. And I want to use it for a shifter, but so first of all I want to kind of see how it cleans up. I don't know much about cleaning metals. I got this stuff, Brasso cleans and polishes seven metals. Put a little bit on there. And I got a Roby buffing wheel on my drill. I probably ought to put this in the vise, but I'm just kind of looking to see how I mean, she's cleaning up. Yeah, we definitely got a little ways to go. It, the kit came with some compound. I think I'll do a little research myself to figure out how to use that, but I want to look somewhat distressed. I can't, I'm really thinking I'm going to like this as a shifter. Alright. So I gave gravity bleeding a shot. Yeah, it seems to have done something, but not everything I need, so I'm going to go ahead and use my pneumatic bleeder. The old Harbor Freight thing. First of all, i got to break this nut loose. This one takes a 7 millimeter, of all things. What's funny is the one on the driver's side takes an 8. 
Don't ask me why I have no idea. But it's the way it is. They're both brand new wheel cylinders. Same brand. You'd think they'd be the same, but they're not. Well, here's a new one for my 43 years on Earth. <laughs> I went to take the bleeder on this one. Yeah. Hush, Nelly. Yeah, it um, it rung off. <laughs> so, if it's bled and it's in the shut position, I'm not going to get overly worried about it. I think it's, I'm not positive about that, so... I'm going to have to see if I can't get my hands on an easy out and another bleeder. And so I've come to a situation where I'm starting to get pretty frustrated. And, well, sometimes you just need to walk away from a project for a little while. So I'm just going to clean up my brake stuff. I'm going to go work on the dash a little bit just to kind of get my mind off this situation. I just fixed the shoe on my Harbor Freight tire machine. Really happy with how that's going. I'll put a link to that video up here in the description. I'll make it available. Go ahead and finish breaking these tires loose. Now these tires are well, well, well past their prime. Another thing I'm gonna do is get these tires off so I can paint the rims. There we go. So do I like this tire changer? I mean, it gets the job done. It's a little getting used to. This one's a little stubborn. Now, if you got some wheels you care an awful lot about, you need to put some kind of rubber or something in here because this thing will tear them up. Uh, these are just plain steel wheels. They're going to be getting poverty caps. And I'm going to be painting them. And I can touch them up when I'm done. So, I think I'll be fine. Well, hell, I got lights. Good evening. So anyway, got the tires off the rims. And tonight, I think I'm going to go ahead and just wire wheel the back side of them. And put a cook mist of black spray in here. Just to kind of preserve them. I should probably take these wheel wheel, or these, I should probably take these wheel weights off. But I'm not that concerned about it right now. This tire got some moisture, so I'm actually gonna do a little bit inside the room too. Alright, so I got them all basically roughed up. Uh, this particular rim is pretty pitted. Now I do have one that's mismatched, it's a little narrower. And I still intend on using them, but when I after I get these things painted and after I take my shower, I might go marketplace see if I can't find some white wagon wheels that'll fit this truck because eh, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Regardless, I'm going to use the rust and rust reformer and try to do something with these wheels. Next 
Now again, this is mostly just to preserve the metal, but also we've got these slots here where there will be some appearance stuff. Ooh, a cricket. Feed that to my turtles. Oh, it also look good on that truck. Some old school bullet holes. All right, I'm going to let these drop overnight, and hopefully sometime tomorrow or soon, I'll be able to come out here, flip them over, wire wheel them down, and put some paint on them. That is if I don't find a, another, another set of rims I like better, because these just aren't in the best shape. But I'm fully prepared to do the factory steel poverty cap deal. Right, so now I'm just going to put a little brake cleaner on here, clean these wheels up. Also see, I got three different styles of wheels here. So that might make me look at the ads one more time. But so this right here, Rust-Oleum Metallic, that's what I'm going to use for rim paint. I think it'll make a nice looking rim. Besides, I already tried it on this one. Not gonna worry too much about the center part because I'm putting the dog dishes on it. All right, tires. So these are actually the old tires off my 80 Ford. But they're in real good shape. And the only reason I took them off that truck is because I wanted white letters. So I put the white letters on it and well I wanted white walls for the 80 Dodge, so perfectly good set right here. Got my Hobo Freak tire machine here. Show you how I use this thing. I did a short video on fixing the shoe. Um, helps to pop the beads. And it has worked out really well for me. I've probably popped about six tires since I've done that. No issues at all. I just use dollar store dish soap. And try a little bit so y'all can see a little bit. I just and on the inside. Whoa! Now I do a He-Man. I've seen some people really good and they can just snap them on like that. I imagine there's a technique to it. Um, I don't know it. But what, what I do is on one side, I'll take a small pair of ice grips like these. And as far as I can, I'll clamp it. Normally it goes a little smoother than this one. I think I'll take a picture so y'all can see. And what that will do is keep the bead from slipping around the tire as you go. You're supposed to be able to take this and hook it on and go around the rim like that. I ain't never had any luck with that. I tried it. But what I do sometimes is I'll take this in and just do like, yay. But my favorite thing is just one of these pry bars. I find the key to using this thing is having it bolted down really good to something ain't gonna move. I think the deck of a car trailer works really well. Also puts that uh, better working height. Alright, there's the inside bead. There's the vice grip. I like the 
is how I find I like to do it. Come that way. And this way where I'm standing on the ground, I can work it. I feel like I do better that way. For years I hated this tool because I thought it was hard to use. Turns out once I found a technique, wasn't too bad. It would appear I forgot something. My valve stem. Um, obviously it's easier to put them in when you don't have a tire on the rim, but it's not the end of the world. It can easily be done. Stick it through here. Get my cable tool that I picked up from AutoZone. Screw it on and just easy does it. Pull it through till it seats in the ridge. Like it is now. Put the dust cap back on. Rag. Clean soap off here. This is honestly the worst rim I have, but it is what it is. What I'm doing here is I'm taking these rags, masking my tires off. I'm going to do a little touch up where I nick the paint. Alright, so I've already removed the expansion tank. I did that a while back. The reason is when a lot of people working on these Mopars know about it, but you go reach over an engine and do something like this, especially when they get old and brittle, crunch, crunch. I didn't want to do that, so I went ahead and removed it. And I actually have a spare one, but hopefully I won't need it. It's one of these things that when I found it in the junkyard, I couldn't hardly say no to a spare. So, anyway, break that hose clamp loose. And that one. That one's not in there. Alright, so. And clear feet. There's one. Alright. So of course I got a pan down there catching everything. Great, but it's not bad. Mostly green. Now this is what I'll say about this radiator. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is trash. Another thing I want to accomplish here is change the belts and remove the emission stuff. Uh, since I got good access. When I tried this before, it was mighty stubborn. But also, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the alternator. Ooh. Ah, boy. 
Get them hoop harvey, Seth. It'll be fun, they said. All right. Go, go ahead and work on getting this exhaust manifold gasket, intake manifold gasket replaced. And maybe even get a little paint on it. I think I know where the leak was. Look how black that one is. Hopefully you could see that. Oh, we're going to need a swivel on this one. It's getting better every one. All right. Got the intake slash exhaust manifold off. And... I'm not, I try not to use too many terms of others, but you can tell this gasket is bad because of the way that it is. You see? Yeah. Definitely, definitely need to replace the intake gasket. It probably run better too. And this, I think that's the lean burn system. <laughs> Could do a little research, figure out what the devil this is, but if that's the lean burn system, say bye-bye. Yeah, this was the most intact piece to come out. It's, it's pretty bad. All right, so first things first, go, go ahead and disconnect this fuel line. And I know it's destroying the metal. I don't really honestly care because it's just going to get replaced anyway. Alright, destroyed that line. That's alright. I'm glad we used it anyway. Alright, so the carburetor's removed. I think I'll just go ahead and stick that in the baggie and put it away. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to stuff a rag in that hole we don't want to get any trash in there while well, I paint the engine. And the well, this does. That's probably about a good idea to wipe the label off those wires, but and you know, we're past that now. And I'm going to put a different carburetor on here. I'm actually going to use the one that's currently on my Pontiac Tempest. I changed it a while back, and well, it just never really was all that happy with that carburetor. It run good. Now if you let it idle for a while it just run like crap. As long as you stayed on and drove it it was fine. And that particular carburetor set up with a return line. So my theory is that because I've got that plugged off because that car doesn't have a return line that maybe when it gets to that stage it's just kind of flooding it out and it just have a hard time recovering so being this truck does have a return line i'm going to take it off the pontiac put it on here give it a try then i got to rebuild kit for the actual pontiac carburetor so that'll be fine but in the meantime let's make this engine look good all right so yeah a minute ago i said i was gonna stuff a rag in the carburetor hole just stuff a grocery bag in there. And the reason I chose that is, well, I got a bunch of them. And also they don't shed any lint as long as you get one that's fairly new. Because they will disintegrate after they get old. But that'll accomplish the same thing. Alright, first thing I'm going to want to do here is mask off the mating surfaces for the manifolds and the thermostat and all that. And yes, it's true that it's got a very intricate shape and it's going to be really tough to match and all that. And you don't want the unpaying stuff to mess everything up. But I got a plan for that. I'm just going to mask over it, get my surfaces clean. Once I get everything put back together, then I'll come back with a spray can, spray it there. And um, that'll clean everything up and keep me from having all the stuff that doesn't look so great. Alright, let's start putting masking tape on there, manageable pieces. 
I'm using the old cream colored stuff. I'm going old school here. But hey, old school does work. Alright, so I loaned out my shop vac and my compressor's all late to fire into the garage. I packed it yesterday not thinking about this. So I don't really feel like digging it out, so I'm just gonna clean off the loose stuff of this. All right, time for another coat. Doesn't happen look too bad. I'm using plastic coat. This used to be like people's go-to. I don't know why it disappeared. Um, I actually found this in one of those Habitat for Humanity restore places. Dirt cheap, so why not? Now, the first can I used was just kind of a generic blue. I use that kind of as a primer. This is actually Chrysler blue. This is the right color. I'm sure I'll get a lot of variety of opinions. About me painting the front of a crankshaft. Personally, I like it. But I understand it's not for everybody. Somebody's not going to like it, but that's fine. Right, so I'm going to put my gasket on. And this does appear to be a bi-directional one, however, the metal part does appear to be offset to one side, so I'm going to stick that towards the manifold. I'm pretty sure this is how this goes. I know in a minute. Now let's see if I can't get the manifold back where it belongs. Whoa! Alright, so I at least got them all started on the top. Now my concern is... Well, for one, I gotta get this on there. But my concern is... Those little spreader pieces right there... Um, I find enough to do the top, but they're all missing on the bottom. So that means one of two things. Either they were missing to begin with from someone that previously done it, which may explain why the, the gasket was completely blown out. The other thing it could mean is that I lost it. Regardless, I need to get something to put in. So I'm going to look under the truck real good, make sure they're not just sitting on the ground. And if that comes to being fruitless and well start contacting my Mopar friends see if any of them have any spare ones of those I can get my hands on if not I'm gonna have to wait for one of the suppliers or Amazon or whatever to deliver to me so anyway see what's the deal with that go ahead and get the top on that's I mean we're getting somewhere all right, so the current status of a reseal rebuild. Got the engine pretty well painted. Gonna have a little touch up to do, but that's expected. Painted the pump flat, the motor mount, got the rest of the emission stuff off there. The painted that flat black. I also went along the firewall, pretty much painted that flat black. That made it look a lot better. It just covered it up 
with something that you tend to ignore made a uniform color. I'm still waiting on a few things to dry. Now, when I said repainted the firewall, y'all might be a little worried. I left that voltage regulator that puked its guts out. Yeah, I did kind of paint over it. I wasn't worried about that because I did plan on changing it. The thing I got to do is get this retainer thing off. Voila. Now I get the piece itself off. And I thought that was going to take a 3 8, so that's going to take a 7 16. Just so I happen to have that ratchet out here. Well, for pity's sake, come find out. Those old guts may have acted like glue. So that's what the back side of that thing looked like. Yeah, we gotta replace it though. But in the meantime, before I actually put it on, I wanna go ahead and hit that spot on the firewall where it's bare. <laughs> That's one thing I like about this stage of a rebuilding process when putting it back together and things are getting painted and new components are going on and all. You can see progress. You do a little bit and you feel like you've done a lot. All right, so I'm up under the Pontiac Tempest here. This is the carburetor I was talking about. Pontiac's not happy with it. So I am gonna rebuild the stock one for the Pontiac on a separate video. But I'm gonna take this one, put it on the truck and hope the truck lights it. So anyway, let me see what I need. Um, it's like half inch wrench, yeah, the usual. And get this humdinger off. That is a 9 16 Okay, so I'll go get one of them here in a minute. In the meantime, see if this will work for this. Popping the linkage off. All right, good. We're good there. <laughs> that may also have been the problem, too. That was barely tied down at all. Either way, regardless, I'm still going to use this truck or this carburetor on that truck. But now I'm going to set this used up wire wheel in there. Plug it off because it's handy. Actually fit very well. Alright, so on the truck I did not just use old wire wheel, I had a piece of masking tape over it. Got the job done. So now go hope the spacing and all's right on this. Yep. Everything's the right size so far. That's good. Now this carburetor is actually for C10 arranging to make this work, but it shouldn't be too awful bad. And to sit her down. But yay. Alright, so I'm thinking put some new vacuum line on the distributor. Alright, right there. Find something to cut. thing we'll go do is change these heater hoses <sighs> so I can get carried away masking them because they go get changed anyway they're not in good condition who calls me all right so up here at the heater core where I pulled this line off I want to try to be extra careful because my Ford truck actually managed to pull the entire fit down the heater core now granted, if the heater core is in such a condition where I can do that, it needed to be replaced anyway. But, that's also an inconvenience I'd just rather not mess with. Especially since it appears with this truck, that I would actually have to go inside and do a bunch of stuff where the Ford actually didn't. Alright, so go ahead and feed the new hose through here. And it's just short. But we aren't going to fret about that. Because it'll be good enough for the other side. It'll definitely be able to use it on the other line. So no harm, no foul. Just need to go cut me another piece of hose. I'll go put this end on. Don't forget the hose clamp. Oh, 
right. And so far, I am really happy with how this engine has turned out. We got, we got a little more to do, but it's it's looking good, and I think she'll do exactly what I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the pulley back on the water pump. Now in doing that, I don't know if I ever mentioned it earlier or not, because this is taking way longer than I thought. Um, I'm going to an electric fan on this truck. And I know they don't move as much air as a conventional. However, they do help them power a little bit. Nothing to change the world over, but one, they only run when needed, and two, and this is the important part, at least if you ask me, the mechanical fan consumes, from what I understand, 5 to 10 horsepower, which when you're making 200, 200 to 210, yeah, it's not that much of a difference, and that's kind of your standard V8 out of the late 60s standard small block, whatever. Have her 95 to 100 to 105, yeah, that is noticeable. Which, removing the fan and converting it to electric should free it up some. I will say on my Ford truck, I actually did notice a slight difference. Like I said, not going to be setting the world on fire, but it did make it a little more powerful. And so to hold the pulley on, I'm actually using stainless steel bolts because of my beautiful rebuild of the engine. I want the bolts here to look nice. Yeah, I could have painted them black. I could have painted them silver. I didn't want them to rust up, so I just, you know, it's, I don't put a whole lot of extravagance in these things, so this is just one area I decided, hey, I want stainless bolts. I like stainless. And those really should be okay, but I will just to be double sure once I get the belt on there, I'm going to go and retorque them. Y'all remind me of that. I know you will. So the stock stain sets air cleaner. You have a hole in the center. It's too small. And that stinks. Alright, so back when I got my Tempest back on the road, the air cleaner assembly was missing. And I went in a junkyard one day just looking for any air cleaner I could put on. And I found a Chevy Nova in the junkyard, a 70s model, one I wish I could find now. And it had an air cleaner on it that was the right size, but it didn't have the right style to it, and it was kind of rusty. So I just used it until I could find a proper air cleaner for that car. So, short story long, the Nova air cleaner is still around and I'm going to use it for this, but I'm also going to spruce it up a little bit because we just got to be, we, we just rebuilt this engine. I want to put something rusty on it. Keep your GM car all GM. So I'm going to do the right thing, put it on Mopar. Now this is the air cleaner assembly I got, and like I said, she, we got a little rust, uh, but we're, we're going to spruce this up. <laughs> it actually initially had this converter on there for cold air intake, and I knocked it off, thinking I'd knock this off and I'd have something good here. Well, come to find out, that's kind of what was holding the whole thing together. Oops. So now I find myself <laughs> and worse off. But... I'm cheap, and I can improvise, and I can MacGyver about anything, so that's what I'm going to do. So, first thing I want to do is get this rusty, falling apart mess off here. And you're going to want to be extremely delicate when you trim this up. So. Alright. Well, it's terrible. Hey, at least I'm honest, right? Well, let's see what we can do. Alright, so I clipped off the heat riser part and all. Um, is what it is, I guess. Um, to figure out a way to plug this off, because well, I don't want that either. Actually, it looks like it may be plugged like it is. Cool. 
awesome. So anyway, the heat riser thing, um, I'm contemplating taking the flap out, but I do need to block off this somehow. So what I may do is I may just put some of my favorite glue that you sit thousand on it right there and just let it glue itself shut. But I also feel like the snorkel needs to be longer. So I was looking at what can I put here that will extend it that I could shape and be about the right size. Well, I cut the lid off a can of brake clean. I'm going to see if I can't get that to go in there. Alright, so here's a rough idea of what it'll look like. Now, of course I'm going to get it all painted up looking nice. And, well, we got to do something about getting some air in here. And be honest with you, if I've been thinking ahead of time, I would have cut the other end off and arranged this a little better where you can actually see that it was a brake cleaner thing. Maybe used a more iconic brand or something. I mean, it's like people using license plates and stuff like that for body panels. I think this is kind of cool, but nonetheless, I'm going to cut me a hole here in the end and use this for my air cleaner. So, very carefully, go try. Gotta be real careful with that vice so I don't distort the can and all that. It doesn't have a whole lot of power. So. Alright, so that little bit of saw was actually able to weaken the can enough. I was able to break it. I just need to get something in there to kind of wiggle this. But pleasant surprise. This will work very nicely, especially with a crimped edge. That will help it hold its shape. So this is good. This is going to turn into a neat snorkel. Alright, so I'm also looking at the bottom of the can. And obviously, yes, I had to remove this damper. I thought about doing this on the inside, but I don't know yet. Well, I'll figure out some way to cap that. But I was also looking where we got this tab here and that hole and all. And I could do like that and make it kind of look like it's got one of those dampers that goes on top wherever that thing went. But, um, not really. And also just to hide this mess. So, Alright, so just a little show and tell here. About what we got. I can't. I don't have to have this one pushed in. Really. way I could pull some air from a little further away from the engine, which I may do. Just if I pull it up this far, it does cover that, which would kill two birds with one stone. <sighs> decisions, decisions. There's pros and cons to no matter what I decide, but I think we're getting on something. Either way, but I'll pull it from a little further from the stock and. So where the damper was, go ahead and enlarge that hole a little bit and drive one through the can. So you go ahead and pop this thing in here. Drill out this side. Where did that piece go? Alright. The grand plan is I'm gonna put that down probably with a screw. But I'm also I'm think I'm gonna leave it silver just to give it a little contrast, but if I don't like it, I'll spray it black. Show you one more little trick before I leave. If you got a place that's hard to get to, if you're um, where you're trying to put a nut on and it kind of falls out the end of a soft wrench, such as save the nuts that go underneath the intake manifold on a slant six. Show you an easy way to keep it from falling out. Now, I'm gonna show you it's on a nut driver. I got a socket and stuff like this too. But I take just a little scrap of masking tape and put so it goes 
over and inside and that will still allow you to put your nut in there you push it and it stays but when you thread it on and you pull this off the nut stays on the stub where it belongs so real easy way to do it a little tip and trick to help y'all on the way all right so that's all the time we have for this week um, i gotta get everything edited and out but in the coming up weeks we're gonna have more on this truck we, we still got a long ways to go i hadn't started this engine probably about six months so we got some stuff to do there we still need to put the radiator back in the hoses the belt hook up the electric fans and all but we've made good progress still got some stuff to do inside the truck got to get that tailgate operational again got to paint the bed and um got some little different stuff coming up for this truck and i got some exciting plans for after this show's over because this is plan d for power tour now i know that's down the list a little bit but um it's also plan a for obx rod fest so i really want to get this truck so it could go do road shows so we got a lot of work to do but i think the old girl's up to it so in the meantime take care of yourself take care of each other take care of your projects god bless i'll see you again soon